From 1750 to 1850, Cornwall was a mining superpower. During this time, the mining industry boomed because everyone wanted copper and tin. These metals were essential for building everything from ships to kettles. They were the fuel for the Industrial Revolution. Cornwall, with its rich underground metal deposits, became the center of this industrial growth. From the rocky cliffs of Land's End to the rolling hills of Bodmin Moor, the landscape changed. Mines, some going thousands of feet underground, became a common sight. The sounds of industry filled the air, the clang of hammers, the rumble of carts, and the shouts of hard-working men. This time wasn't just about making more things, it was about new ideas. New ways of mining were invented, and tools were improved to get ore from deeper and deeper underground. Cornish miners were famous for their skills and bravery. They were in high demand all over the world. Their knowledge helped start mines in far-off places like South America and Australia. This century of mining changed Cornwall forever. It changed the land, the economy, and even how Cornish society worked. It's a story of hardship and danger, but also of cleverness, teamwork, and a deep love for the land. Going deep underground required special tools, each made for a specific job in the fight against rock and ore. The Cornish miners' tools were simple but effective, perfected over many years of experience. The pick and shovel, though basic, were the most important tools. The pick, with its sharp point and heavy head, broke hard rock and uncovered the metal veins. The shovel, often with a short handle for tight spaces, cleared away the broken rock. As mines went deeper, miners needed better ways to break rock. Gunpowder, first used in the early 1600s, changed mining forever. Carefully placed explosives could blast tons of rock, creating tunnels and shafts that would have been impossible to dig by hand. Using explosives was dangerous and required skill and planning. A mistake could cause deadly accidents, and the fumes from the gunpowder could be fatal in the poorly ventilated mine shafts. These tools, used in the dark and damp mines, were more than just objects, they were a part of the miners themselves. Each swing of the pick, each carefully placed explosive, brought them closer to the riches hidden in the earth. The Cornish mining landscape was full of shafts, vertical tunnels that went deep into the earth. These amazing engineering feats were the lifeline of the mining operation, providing access to the metal veins and a way to move materials up and down. Digging a shaft was hard and dangerous work. Men worked in shifts, chipping away at the rock with picks and shovels and sending the broken rock to the surface in buckets. As the shaft got deeper, wooden supports were added to prevent collapses. From the main shaft, horizontal tunnels called levels branched out following the metal veins. These levels often had interesting names, reflecting the miners' hopes and fears, danger level, good success level, or beggar's end. The Cornish mining system was known for being very efficient. It used a network of shafts, levels and winches to move men and materials. Water, a constant problem underground, was removed using pumps powered by water wheels or later steam engines. Life underground was tough. The air was thick with dust and the smell of gunpowder. It was completely dark except for the flickering light of candles or oil lamps. The search for valuable minerals was very dangerous. Cornish miners faced many dangers every time they went underground. Accidents were common and death was always a possibility. Falling rocks were a constant threat. A sudden collapse could bury miners alive. And even blasting with gunpowder could loosen the surrounding rock, making it more likely to fall. The dust from drilling and blasting full of tiny bits of silica could cause a serious lung disease called miner's phthisis or silicosis. And then there was the ever-present danger of flooding. Many mines went below sea level and a crack in the rock could send a rush of water through the tunnels, drowning miners trapped below. Despite the risks, miners kept going underground. The promise of steady work, a sense of friendship with their fellow miners and the hope of becoming rich kept them going. 
Mining had a huge impact on Cornish society. It changed not only the landscape, but also the lives of the people. Entire communities grew up around the mines. Their daily routines were set by the clanging bells that signaled the beginning and end of each work shift. Mining was a family affair. Men worked underground, while women and children often worked above ground, sorting ore, running machines, or doing other important jobs. This shared experience created a strong sense of community, a bond formed in the face of hardship and danger. Many workers came from other parts of Britain and even from Ireland, leading to a bigger population and a mix of cultures. New towns and villages appeared, often built quickly and without basic services. Housing was often small and crowded, and diseases could spread rapidly. Mining clearly boosted the economy. It brought jobs and wealth to an area that had long been poor, but the wealth wasn't shared equally. Mine owners and investors made the most money, while miners often worked for low wages in dangerous conditions. The 1700s saw a big change in mining technology with the arrival of steam power. James Watt's invention of the steam engine in 1776 greatly affected Cornish mining, changing the industry and allowing it to go deeper than ever before. Steam engines were first used to power pumps, keeping the constant threat of flooding away. As technology improved, steam engines were used to power other mining equipment, such as winches for lifting ore and men to the surface. Steam power made mining much more productive. Mines could be dug deeper and more ore could be extracted. This increased the need for workers, making mining communities even bigger. Using steam power wasn't easy. The engines were expensive to build and maintain and skilled engineers were needed to run them. But the advantages were much greater than the difficulties and steam power quickly became a vital part of Cornish mining. By the middle of the 1800s, the best days of Cornish mining were ending. New copper and tin deposits were found in other parts of the world and less ore was being found in Cornwall. This caused the industry to slowly decline. The closing of mines caused hardship for many Cornish communities. People lost their jobs and families had to find new ways to make a living. Many emigrated, following the path of their ancestors to mining areas around the world. Even though mining declined, its impact remained. The engine houses, chimneys and abandoned mines became famous landmarks in Cornwall, a reminder of the industry that had shaped the region for centuries. The spirit of the Cornish miners, their toughness, ingenuity and strong community continued to inspire future generations. Their story is a part of Cornwall's history, a memory of a time when the roar of engines filled the valleys and the clang of picks could be heard deep underground. The hundred years between 1750 and 1850 was a very important time for Cornish mining. It was a time of great progress and big changes, a time when the search for valuable minerals changed the land, the economy and the lives of the people. Today, as we look at the ruins of engine houses and the marks left on the landscape, it's important to remember the people behind the industry. The Cornish miners, with their simple tools and strong determination, left a lasting legacy. Their story reminds us of the power of human ingenuity, the importance of community, and the strong connection between people and the land they call home.